Happy Monday. We are back to talk some more MLB baseball. Let's go. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I'm your host, Steven, and we are back to talk some more baseball, baby. That's right. Uh, we're going to recap the weekend in a little bit, but we had a small, profitable weekend. I wanted more, but of course, I always want more. So, before we get into anything, though, in this slate, I got to tell you, we have a new partner. It is Outlier. Some of you guys have already heard about it. Some of you may even be using it. Um, I knew it helped me a little bit, but I did not know how much of a game changer it really is. It's literally like a one-stop shop uh, for researching sports for me. It's just been unbelievable. I'm not having to go to a million different websites or anything like that. Um, ton of advantages to it. If you want to look up last five, last 10, last 15, you can check all the props, all the players. I mean, it, I could go on and on about this. We are going to be showing Outlier throughout our videos. You're going to see it so you can at least see it, have a visual of it and what you're looking at and kind of what I'm looking at too when I'm looking at bets and, and research and all that. So it's incredible. And speaking of Outlier, it will be a part of our Dinger Tuesday winner uh, contest winner that we're going to have in tomorrow's video. So stay tuned for that. It's a great prize. It's pretty awesome. But anyways, they're great to work with. And uh, if you want to join or go check it out at least, go click that link below in the description and go get that free trial. I'm telling you, it really is a game changer. It's really helped me. So anyways, that's what we got. Let's get into all this. And that starts with the baseball fun fact. Here we go. Only four teams in MLB history have won every time they have played in the World Series. Now, without cheating, think of who they are. And I'll let you know the answer at the end of the video. That's right. Four teams that have made it to the World Series that have never lost. Just for your own sake, think what you see, what you got. Leave a comment below at the after you watch the whole video, and tell me if you knew all four of them. You could cheat, obviously. I won't know, but anyways, we'll let you know. In this video, we're gonna recap the weekend, and then we're gonna go over the good hitter matchups, the good pitcher strikeout matchups, of course, that entire pitcher report, and then wrap it all up with the best bets and the bets recap. So hit that like button if you haven't already. Leave a comment below. It really helps the algorithm. You guys that do it every single day, I really appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button as we're on our way to 26,000 subscribers. All right, let's get into it. And it starts with the recap. All right, there it is. We're not going to go over every single bet because that's just a ton. But Friday was a tough one to take, guys. Two and four. But this is how close we were to a winning day. All we needed was three and three for a winning day. Because as you can see, we hit George Kirby under a half a walk at plus 150. And boy, oh boy, did that feel good. But here is the, the most mind-boggling thing I've ever seen. Jesse Winker over at one and a half hits plus uh, RBIs and runs. He was the only Nationals player to not go over one and a half HRRs. It's, it's, you can't even make that up. Only one to not get a hit. It was wild. They scored a million runs, got a million hits, and he went over. It was brutal. Uh, one of the plays we lost was Stephen Kwan, two plus hits, half unit play, you know, taking a chance. But either way, two and four, but Saturday picked it up. As you can see, we went two and oh on those HRR bets. We hit Corbin Burns under six and a half Ks. That was an easy winner, actually. And uh, we had a three-leg hitter parlay. I thought we were rolling. I, thought I was looking at maybe a sweep, maybe a five in one day. And then Bobby Witt goes absolutely hitless and just killed me. Um, and then we had a small play on Eflin under a half a walk, and he got one walk. So we missed out on that one. I'm not going to say we lost on the hook because you can't lose on a hook when you're betting a half prop. But anyways, then Sunday, just we had a couple small bets, but one and two. Um, Hogan Harris, easy under uh, four and a half K. So we had two under K props in the weekend that hit pretty easily. Um, but the hitters struggled on Sunday. I was not expecting it. Adley crushes lefties. He could not get it done as the Orioles struggle in Houston. Then Royce Lewis, um, I didn't see a replay, but what I heard is he had a home run robbed, which just hurts me. Or maybe he didn't. Maybe it was close. I haven't checked it out yet. Um, but either way, we were on a roll, but now we're three and three on those hits, runs, and RBIs props so far this season. So that's the overall notes of it and what we did over the weekend and the overall record. It's time to keep digging out of that hole. But before we get into those best bets, let's talk some good hitter matchups. All right, we got 13 good hitter matchups for you today. And it is Patrick Corbin Day, although he hasn't been terrible lately. Manny Machado, 7 for 21 off of him. Um, and then the other uh, bash bro out there in San Diego, Fernando Tatis, is 5 for 9 off of Corbin. Um, and then we got a couple Cincinnati Reds. Tyler Stevenson, 5 for 11 off Bailey Falter, along with Spencer Steer over there, 5 for 8 versus Mr. Falter. Oh, and we also have Jerickson Profar, also 3 for 7 versus Patrick Corbin. So uh, those are all the rest of the guys. Not a ton. Um, you know, we've had more before, but still some good 
good matchups here, especially you got Rafael Devers versus Chris Bassett. I still believe Chris Bassett is pitching. It's kind of gone back and forth, but as of recording, he is, so you want to check that out. But he has two home runs in those five hits. So those are the hitter matchups for Monday. And now let's talk some arms. All right, we got two good pitcher strikeout matchups for you today, and it starts out with the lefty, Cole Reagans of the Royals. Going to get up against Miami. Miami, third highest K percentage versus lefties since June 1st, 26.2%. Cole Reagan's 109 Ks in 92 innings. He's been a stud, and he's been really good at home. His home K rate is 31.8% compared to 25.6 on the road. Just a crazy split difference there. He has six plus Ks in five straight home starts. Second one, the righty, Taj Bradley versus my Seattle Mariners. Mariners, fourth highest K percentage versus righties last or since June 1st. 24.6% and Bradley 53 Ks in 44.1 innings. And what a split this one is. Now, he only has eight starts, but still 35.3% at home, 17.6 on the road, five starts at home. You can see all the numbers there. I'm going to stop talking about it because we are going to talk that game a little later. And now just he's on the card. We got to talk about him. I mean, Garrett Crochet is just unbelievable. Maybe the number one strikeout pitcher in all of baseball. He didn't make the pitcher strikeout matchups because of who he's playing against, but we got to talk about the crochet effect here. Crochet, 124 Ks in 88.2 innings. Um, Dodgers, though, have the fifth lowest K percentage versus lefties. Now, does that matter? Maybe not, because he just faced the Astros, who have the dead last lowest K rate versus lefties, and he still had 8 Ks. I mean, he is that good. Some of you guys were watching. I know we talked about it on Discord. Um, but Crochet, eight plus Ks now in five straight starts. He is something else. And there are playoff teams all over the league that are trying to look into trading for him at the trade deadline. But anyways, just wanted to point that out. It is a tough matchup, but it may not matter with Crochet, that's for sure. But those are the pitchers strikeout matchups for Monday. And now let's talk the pitcher report. All right, here are the first six matchups. And if you are new to the channel and haven't seen this, on the bottom are all the averages for each category, just so you guys have something to compare it to. Um, but you know, hopefully this helps you get walk props, K props, whatever it is you like to bet, or maybe it's just a way to start your day, but we got some interesting matchups here. Uh, Tanner Bybee has been really good for the guardians. Let's face it. He's just been pretty solid lately, almost a 30% K rate, um, going up against the Orioles who just got swept in Houston and Maury Povich is now going to be pitching for them. The youngster, he did decent against the Yankees last start. Um, 2.8 to expect the RA is a, is a good sign. Again, only 16 innings, as you can tell, not missing many bats at all. Um, but Casey Mize has his hands full, giving up 10.6 hits per nine innings, now going up against the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, at least it will be at home, but he's not a guy who misses many bats or anything. And then Aaron Nola for the Phillies, um, just solid. He's just one of those guys, three and a half ERA, just lock it in and uh, he'll be pretty good. Uh, K rate's a little down this year, but still an above average K guy. And then Brian Wu had his worst start of the season last year, or last start, but still 1.67 ERA, low expected, low hits per nine, low walks like most Mariner pitchers are. It's been impressive. Um, he's going up against Spires or Spears. I have no idea. Um, but And then Chris Bassett, who I think is starting for the Blue Jays, going up against Tanner Houck of the Red Hot Boston Red Sox. Uh, Tanner Houck's been impressive. I mean, I've been kind of waiting for him to to fall off a little bit, but I've seen him pitch the last couple starts. It's been impressive, and he he's just good. You can see his underlying metrics, 2.72 expected ERA, um, low whip, above average K, above well above average walks, and hits per nine. So he's been solid. And then we end with the rookie versus the old man, Schwellenbach, Rowan Gardner against Lance Lynn. So that's just an okay matchup. It is what it is. But those are the first six matchups. Let's take a look now at page two. All right, here are the final six matchups, and we start with the battle of the lefties, the old man, Big Maple, James Paxton versus Crochet, who just has ridiculously silly numbers, as you can see. And then Munoz of the Marlins, handing out home runs like they're candy, going up against Cole Reagans, the stud for the Royals, the ace. As the Royals look to get back on track, they are falling apart at the seams right now. Uh, and then Peralta, who is a guy who can look really good and not look really good. He's been really inconsistent. And Lorenzen, he's due for some negative regression. Doesn't miss a lot of bats, but he does have a three ERA right now, not giving up a lot of hits. Um, and then we got a couple gas cans. I mean, Funky Cole Medina and Canning. I mean, it's literally in his name, a Canning. I mean, they have just not been good. Uh, Medina's only had 21 innings. I saw him pitch. He's not a guy who's missing many bats or fooling many hitters. That's for sure. Um, and then Patrick Corbin, we all know about him going up against the knuckleballer who just continues to dominate. I think he's going to, 
he he has gone like th- given up three earned runs or less in almost every start. It seems like he's just he's given his team a chance to win going up against the lefty Corbin, who, you know, I think last two starts, he's been a lot better. So um, but he still is giving up a lot of hits per nine. And then we have no pitchers right now in the Cubs Giants. I don't want to touch the game. Uh, Giants seem to never have a pitcher listed at the beginning. So that is the pitcher report from Monday. And now let's talk the best bets. All right, this first bet takes us out to Tropicana Field where the Tampa Bay Rays are hosting my Seattle Mariners. Mariners on the money line, minus 112. Rays money line, minus 108, with a total of seven and a half runs. I am going to get right into it. You already know the bet. We just talked about it. Give me Taj freaking Bradley over six and a half Ks. It is juicy at minus 135 right now. I like it for a one unit. I don't know all my bets yet. Like I told you, I add some in the morning, but this may end up being my favorite one. And you know what, to talk about it, just so you guys can see what I'm looking at, let's pull up some outlier um, so we can see the stats as well. But as you can see down there on the right, on the bottom, the Mariners hitters have a ridiculously high K percentage versus righties. It's it's almost laughable. Cal Raleigh, as you see, 32.3%. Mitch Garver, 29%. Hanniger, 26.9%. Rayleigh, 35 Even Julio, 272 Guys, it's insane. And these are like their top hitters. I'm not giving you their seven through nine hitters. Um, And then you saw the numbers for Bradley, like we talked about earlier, 35.3% K rate at home. And now we can go here on outlier and check out the home right there. You click on that button and then you go toggle home and you can see over and for the last five games, seven plus Ks. He has seven or six plus Ks in five of the last five. But as you see down there, you can see who they're against O's and Yankees guys. Those are not teams that strike out a lot. Um, Just been unbelievable at home when it comes to K's. And so um, just wanted to show you a little bit about that on Outlier, just all the stats they give as well. But I love this bet, guys. Most people don't know this also. The Mariners players have a stipulation in their contract where they make more money when they miss. Okay, that's just what I'm going to assume. I mean, why else would you be swinging and missing so much like they are? But either way, the recent right-handed pitchers versus the Mariners to go over this number, Tanner Bybee, 12, Dane Dunning, 8, Jonathan Cannon, who, by the way, is a AAA pitcher. Let's face it, he just got absolutely rocked yesterday. Um, He had seven Ks. Nathan Evaldi didn't go over, but he had six. Alec Marsh had eight. Taj Bradley, with his K percentage and how he performs at home, and he's a guy who has good stuff. I mean, if you watch him pitch, he's got good stuff, especially when he's on his command is on. He's really spotting corners and stuff. I, I mean, this is a guy, if he is on his game, he could strike out nine or ten Mariners. Let's just face it. But for this one, it might move. It might go to seven and a half plus money. I still don't mind it there at all. But as my first best bet, give me the Taj Mahal over six and a half Ks at minus 135. All right, bet number two is a player prop parlay. Give me the knuckleballer, Matt Waldron, under two and a half earned runs allowed, and Casey Mize, no to record a win. I got that at plus 108 on DraftKings. Now, the first one, Matt Waldron, under two and a half earned runs, is about minus 140 to minus 150 on its own. I have to use that second leg to reduce the juice, but let's talk about it. He is a knuckleballer. And apparently he's just really good. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you guys since he started using the knuckleball. He is now under this line in eight straight games. I will say that again. He's under this line in eight straight games. He's also one or less earned runs in five of his last seven or five of his last eight. Sorry. That's just insane to me. Now, those eight games, you think, well, maybe he played terrible teams. How about one earned run at Philly? How about two at the New York Mets who have been hitting the ball better? One versus the D-backs. Two in Cincinnati in that ballpark. One in Atlanta and two versus the red-hot L.A. Dodgers offense. I mean, guys, I don't know what to tell you. This guy has just been extremely hard to hit. We already talked about it. It's because of that knuckleball. He's using it now 38% of the time this year, uh, more lately, actually. He has a 200 batting average against that pitch, a 181 uh, expected batting average against it, only a 4% barrel rate. This ball is freaking dancing, and the hitters can't barrel it up. It just is what it is. We've seen Tim Wakefield um, and guys like that. When they're on, they are really hard to hit. Um, and he's not a guy who just, when he does throw a fastball, throws 86. He's still throwing low 90s. Um, so it's just been tough for hitters. And now, I love this matchup. He's facing a Nationals offense. They've been okay. You know, they're a competitive team. I am impressed by how they're playing. But it's a terrible spot. They are leaving Coors Field and have to play the very next day now in San Diego. It is tough to leave Coors Field and change to the altitude and play the next day. You just saw it with the Dodgers. They just played their last game in Colorado. Next day, played the LA Angels at home, scored two runs, lost three to two. Um, and Nats in general, they're about average versus righties in the last month. 15th WRC plus. They're always a team that does not have a lot of power. Um, and Matt Waldron doesn't give up a lot of power. Only seven home runs and 83.1 innings. I think most of those were at the very beginning of the season. Um, so this is a great matchup, which means I think the Nats are going to have to just string together a ton of hits in this one. 
and I don't see it happening. I've seen much better offenses struggle against Mr. Waldron. Um, and if you're going to have to string together hits, I like my chances here. So give me Waldron under two and a half earned runs as the first leg. And Casey Mize, no win for the Tigers. I mean, guys, he's going up against Aaron Nola. And uh, Aaron Nola is obviously the much better pitcher. Casey Mize does not miss many bats. I think he's going to get hit around in Detroit here. I think he's going to leave with the team down. I mean, let's just face it. If you look at all the lines, Philly's favored to be up after five innings. Uh, Casey Mize's odds aren't favored to go in many outs in this game. Um, there's a chance he gets rocked and doesn't go five innings. But even if he does, I can't imagine him with the lead with this Detroit Tigers offense as well. Um, so give me Casey Mize. No win. It's like minus 500. Like I said, it's just to reduce the juice. Get this from about minus 145. Uh, to plus 108. So that is my second best bet. And I'm going to have more in the morning. I do love this slate, but I just can't be up till, you know, 1 a.m. So um, I'm definitely going to be adding more, possibly one more before I go to bed after this video is made. But uh, we'll see. So anyway, stay tuned for that. It'll also be on X and Discord. But of course, we're not done yet. We got to talk some hitter parlay ideas. So I have five of them for you. Obviously, I could sit here and say Stephen Kwan, Shohei Otani, just the elite of the elite, but I'm going to give you guys some other ones. You know, some are a little obvious, some are not. First one, maybe a little more obvious, Mr. Bryce Harper. Hitting 462 in the last seven days, one plus hit in 13 of his last 14. Now two plus hits in five of his last seven. He's really heating up, and he's facing that boy, Chris Mize. Or Chris Mize. I don't know where I got that from. Casey Mize. Um, giving up over 10 hits per nine innings, as we already saw. The next one, Brian Reynolds. I feel like we're all supposed to be quiet about it, but Brian Reynolds is on a 20-game hitting streak. I mean, he's been unbelievable. We have mentioned it before, um, but it's kind of under the radar. He's hitting 429 in the last seven days. He is facing Connor Spires, Spears. Again, I'm going to say it both ways because I don't know. 26 hits given up in 25.1 innings. He is just meh. Nothing nothing big there. Third one, the lefty, Alec Burleson of the Cardinals. Never mentioned him before. 409 in the last seven days. 311 he is hitting versus righties. Just crushing him. Um, versus lefties, 206. Makes sense. He is a lefty hitter. Um, hitting 281 on the season. He's quietly just really coming on. Having a pretty solid year this year. Uh, Two-plus hits in four of his last five games, if you're looking at a two-plus hit prop. Facing the rookie, Henry Rowan Gardner, Schellenbach. Um, 19 hits in 21.2 innings. Nothing special. He's been a little bit better in his last couple starts. He hasn't had that many starts as a rookie. Um, but he is giving up a higher batting average and more hits to lefties as well. Fourth one, Manny Machato. He is hitting 393 in the last seven days. We saw it earlier. Seven for 21 off Corbin. It's good. 333 average. It's not unbelievably elite, but it's still a good matchup. One plus hit in six of his last eight. Slowly starting to come around. Um, he hasn't had the greatest of seasons, but it's Patrick Corbin. It's at home. Give me Manny, Manny Machado. Um, Spencer Steer, the fifth one. Five for eight off Bailey Falter. Just hitting him really well. One plus hit, nine of his last 13. So in some pretty good form. He does hit better versus lefties. Now, the one warning on this one is he's hitting only 234 on the season. But again, this is one of those maybe you get some low odds um, and get some plus money on a hitter parlay or something like that um, for a guy hitting only 234 because he's got a good matchup. Has, like I said, one plus hit, nine of 13. So just want to give you all the options so you have something to, to think about, whether it's the minus 300 odds or the minus 180 for a hit or anything like that. So... That's what I got. Those are my two best bets. The hitter parlay ideas and all the research for today. More plays will be added. Don't you worry. I do love this slate. So before we wrap it up, let's check out the recap. All right, there it is. Taj Bradley over six and a half Ks at minus 135. We are eating the juice. And then the Matt Waldron knuckleballer under two and a half earned runs. And Casey Mize, no, to record a win at plus 108 on DraftKings. I love the slate, so I will definitely be adding plays. So check out pinned comments on X and on Discord. But if you followed us and listened to the beginning, you know we had a baseball fun fact. Only four teams in MLB history has made, have never lost a World Series every time they played it. It is the Blue Jays, 2-0 in the World Series. The Miami Marlins or Florida Marlins, 2-0. Nationals, 1-0. And the Angels, 1-0. The Mariners are 0-0 as the only team to never make it. Nothing to do with it. I just want to point that out. But that is the baseball fun fact answer in case you're wondering. So leave a comment below. Let me know if you guys actually knew that answer, which would be pretty impressive. But thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. Let's start the week out hot. Hope everyone has a great Monday, and we'll talk to you soon.